All right, so another day and another story, and this one is not an anonymous story. So we have a real person, the Thomas Leward. And Thomas Leward is um, writing from the United States, and I'm very thankful to, uh, to Thomas for sharing his story. So Thomas basically received uh, the Pfizer shots, and uh, he's got quite a severe side effects that literally changed his life. And uh, as I promised Thomas, I'm sharing your story. Um, I really hope that, uh, again, people will hear you out. If, if someone has the same kind of issues, they will write in the comments. Um, so I'm going to read the whole message of Thomas, just to make sure that nothing is getting lost and we get every single word from Thomas. Um, so good morning, Nick. Um, well, my story starts in the summer of 2021. Before getting the Pfizer shot, I was relatively healthy, 64 year old who enjoyed walking my new husky puppy around our neighborhood streets and nearby footed path to explore nature's wonders with her and my 24-year-old daughter. This all began to change when I went and got the shots of the first dose in June and the second in July. Those days of being able to walk with them each day started to change when I believe it was hot August afternoon and while walking just halfway around our block, I started to have a shortness of breath. And I had to stop in place to let it settle down before continuing the walk. At the time, I thought I had just become uh, overheated from the hot sun. This issue with shortness of breath became a little less the following days and finally stopped. At this same time, I now remember having my right leg to have aching at night from the low calf area to the back of the knee. I thought it might be only signs of needing in the future possible knee surgery. I remember putting on a compression sock to, su to help support my leg and knee area. I would wear it when I would go out to walk the dogs as well. The issue with shortness of breath started up again in late October and into November, but this time I would be, uh, it would be when I would climb the stairs to our home each day. On days when I felt up to walk just around the block, I would continue to have periods of shortness of breath as well as and would need to turn back to home. I put up with the pain in my right leg and the shortness of breath until it became almost a daily occurrence. Um, this is when I reached out to my doctor for a consultation about the issue. He listened to my description of the symptoms and said that I might have a blockage so he ordered the blood work for me and to get a CT scan of my chest area. Uh, this was on Friday, January 7th, and I went to see him and I scheduled the blood draw to be on the following Monday, January 10th. So I woke up very early that morning and needed to go to the bathroom, but found that I could only take a few steps before I started not to be able to breathe. I had to let this, um, what I call episode settle down uh, and then take another three steps and it would start up over again. I now know how it must feel when a person can't get enough air in the lungs when they are drowning. I was in the state of pure panic at this point, so I contacted my doctor and he said for me to go directly to the ER. My daughter drove me there and told them of my symptoms and they did initial blood work as well as CT scan and told me I had a blockage in both lungs and a cluster of blood clots in my upper thigh area of my right leg. I was shocked to hear this news and then told me I would need to have them removed the next day and to also have the Denali metal fiber put into my Vienna cover to catch any other clots that might start to flow up that leg. I was there in a hospital for a few days to get the clots removed and to recover. Later in the week, the radiologist informed me that the two major clots in my lungs had calcified and when he had tried to remove them, he said he was only able to get strands of them. So they are still there in my lungs today. He also said that the clots in the right leg um, had completely blocked the flow of the artery, that the clots in my lung had broken off and had flowed through my heart and had lodged into my lungs. For this reason, I would need to take a blood thinner to control any other clots that might form again. 
On Friday the 14th of January, I was discharged from the hospital with a new awareness on life and how important it is to pay attention to small signs of things happening to your body. I asked how the clothes had formed in such a fast amount of time and the ones in my lungs the doctor said must have been there for a few months, uh, which thinking back now would explain my leg aching and the continuing shortness of breath I had experienced early on. The doctor didn't say why the clothes had formed so quickly, but I did some research on my own and discovered that the clothes could be formed by issues with the virus. Um, now you would think this would conclude my story, but there is a part two. This part two of my story began just three days later, when at home, when on the morning of January 17th, I climbed by stairs like I had all the weekend. And when I reached the top, I didn't have any shortness of breath, but did become very dizzy. And my vision became very disordered and blurry. I reached for my blood pressure monitor to discover it was very low, 83 to 65, uh, with a heart rate of 105. I became very alarmed because the day before it had been um, at 139. So I contacted my doctor and he again said this was very serious and to go to the ER once again. My doctor drove me there because I was weak uh, and I couldn't walk very well. In the ER they perform a test called orthostatic where they take blood pressure, reading of me lying down, then sitting up and finally standing this uh, is where I became very dizzy and room was disordered with my vision. They ran numerous tests and retests each day for three weeks in the hospital and each day this orthostatic reading uh, would show a significant drop in the blood pressure when I would just be standing. All the doctors were very puzzled by this issue until I had a visit from a neurologist and in examination she thought it might be because of my issue with diabetes until I informed uh, because of my issue. Uh, I informed her that in speaking with my father's wife, she informed me that he had suffered from this neuropathy, and so the doctor then determined I must have what is called autonomic neuropathy, and this would explain the sudden drop in my blood pressure. So they had been giving me this combination of drugs to try and bring my blood pressure up to a sustainable level for working, but. Nothing seemed to be working and even to this day of February 20th, I still have this issue uh, with my blood pressure each day and so far nothing cured it. I'm waiting to see both neurologists and cardiologists to administer a test called the TIL table uh, to determine if I do have autonomic neuropathy or not and if so, there is no cure and I will perhaps be dead in six to nine years from now or sooner if I should hit my head while passing out. In doing further research on my own just recently, I have found that uh, my issues may stem from what some are saying is the long haul virus, which is caused by the short and its severe injuries that it can cause to certain individuals such as myself. I felt it necessary to tell the story because the medical doctors and um, governing bodies throughout the world now need to admit these they are serious issues with all of the shots that have been administered to some of the population and need to be helping those injured instead of continuing to deny or to cover up these findings and just let people suffer and die. Nick, I hope by publishing my story it might bring to light others with the same issues or similar ones that can feel the need to speak up and speak out loudly. So this can be recognized as very serious medical emergency and needs to be addressed immediately. In closing, my name is Thomas Lillard and I live here in the United States of America. And before I took the shot, I had no problems at the ones to do. I do have now. And so far, nothing has been able to correct this horrible outcome. Thank you for giving me this chance to bring my story to light as well as that your own. Good luck to you and to others like us that continue to suffer. Sincerely, Thomas Leward. Uh, it was very hard for me to read this story because um, I don't wish anyone to face the same problem as Thomas said. Uh, it's just incredibly bad. Having the blood clots, having issues with the blood pressure, etc. is just 
it, it breaks my heart, seriously, it just breaks my heart. Because, um, again, people were healthy, everything was fine. And then suddenly out of nowhere, their life completely changed. So I want to say huge thanks to Thomas for sharing his story. And uh, I just want to say that I fulfilled the promise, the story is life. Um, if anybody else experienced the same kind of issues, I'm sure that Thomas is going to monitor the comments of this video. Uh, please write the message. Um, we already have some of the viewers and some of the channel that I shared uh, that had some uh, blood clots in lungs uh, after the fire just shot, so they shared their own stories. Um, so yeah, I really hope all the best to Thomas, that uh, like soon enough there would be something that can help him. Thomas already submitted all of the reports to um, the wires and yes, I sincerely hope that um, everything is going to be fine on his side. So again, thank you very much Thomas and if you have any other comments, please uh, drop them just below the video and yes, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.